Your name is Spade Slick. You're the leader of a notoriously vicious gang of mobsters called the Midnight Crew. A rival gang known as the Fell recently knocked over one of your favorite casinos. Your long quest of revenge has finally taken you through the front door of the mansion belonging to their loathsome boss, Lord English. Your subordinates, Club's Deuce, Diamond's Droog, and Hot's Boxcars have been dispatched to various locations throughout the mansion to begin carrying out your mission. Your objective is to locate and crack English's secret vault and plunder its mysteries. That's the business end of it. The pleasure will be in painting this ugly house red with the blood of those miserable green motherfuckers. You inspect the timekeeping devices. Stupid gang and their lousy obsession with clocks. The sooner all these idiots stop being alive, the better. You wonder where they are. It's awfully quiet in this mansion, sans all the dreadful ticking. It is suggested that you capture log the carriage clock. You obviously have no idea what that means. If it's some smart ass way of saying to pick it up, forget it. You're already carrying an item. It's a trusty deck of cards. It is suggested that you build a fort with the clocks. You have an idea. That is so much better. Clocks destroyed, four out of a thousand. You check for traps under the billiards rug. What is under the rug is much worse than any trap you can imagine. It's a member of a species that you do not recognize with a ghastly foid up lip. You cover the unsightly individual back up and try to forget it ever existed. It is suggested that you play 52 Pickup. You would need a deck of cards to play that infernal game. Fortunately, all you have is your war chest, which you deploy on the floor. You open your war chest. You rummage around. It's no unusual assortment of belongings, and not in any mobs to wait this salt would be caught plotting and scheming wet out. Certainly not an eyebrow raising. A bunch of blades, some playing cards, and a variety of other miscellaneous stuff. Also, your Vendetta itinerary and your heist map. It is suggested that you scavenge war chest for fancy headwear. If there are any elaborate hairdressers in here, you'll eat your haberdasher. But of course, there is only a plain and serviceable backup hat, which naturally conceals two licorice Scotty dogs. Which makes you think that maybe you were wearing your backup hat, and this is the usual one? Hell if you know. The same damn hat! It is suggested that you hide inside your war chest. But you cannot properly hide inside the chest because you cannot close it while you're inside. Instead, you momentarily pretend it's a really cool automobile that commands the fear and respect of loss in his adversaries everywhere. Beep, beep, beep! I'll abort the idiot wagon! It is suggested that you start up the Crosby Top. Is that what this thing is? You've had it for some time and you don't quite remember how you got it. You never knew the identity of this pipe-smoking creature. Perhaps it could be the same species as the character you saw under the rug. But you know that's impossible, because this one does not feature the same bizarre foid lip. They are probably different species within the same genus. You go to mspaintadventures.com. You don't know why you're wasting your time on this website. It's for little children who poop hot in the baby-ass diapers. Also, you don't understand what the hell is going on or who all these characters are. It's all a lot of nonsense. You delete the time setting on the Crosby Top. Clock's destroyed. 5 out of a thousand. It is suggested that you take the spade key. You take the rules card for blackjack. You've possessed this item for as long as you can remember. You do not yet know its significance. Though you can hustle up a mean game of blackjack when you need to. You examine your vendetta itinerary. These are the mugshots of everyone who you are going to kill. You got a head start. You're already off crowbar matchsticks and quarters, depleting them of some of their muscle. You still gotta watch out for the others and stay aware of their despicable time shenanigans. Itchy has given you the slip repeatedly. Those you've captured and interrogated just as repeatedly to no avail. Trace has broken into your secret hideout more times than you can count, while Finn always seems to be a step ahead of you and scoops your heists. Clover has all the intel and is highly cooperative. You might need him to crack the vault. He'll be guarded. Best to avoid dying in any direct confrontations unless you want a temporal mess on your hands. But if you need any repairs, you could always get the stitch and persuade him. And you might need to if you can't kill Sawbuck with a clean shot. Eggs and biscuits are morons, but they are dangerous morons. Kansas a tank and your crew will probably need more ammunition than you pack to take him down. No one knows what Lord English looks like, but that'll be corrected tonight. 
you got dibs on English. He's all yours. You wonder where the number eight mugshot went? It's right here. You aren't gonna kill Snowman. Is that a question? You examine your heist map. On review, the schemes seem a bit convoluted. But you wouldn't have it any other way. Deuce and Druke split up to neutralize as many felt as they can find. Your heavy muscle and expert safe cracker, box guards, is headed straight down to the vault. You put the void out to your cronies for a status report. No response yet. You clean up all your junk and prepare to get this show on the road. You slip the spade key back into the deck of cards, then pocket the war chest. Smooth as clockwork, and every bit is logical. You enter the hallway near the main entrance. Funny, you didn't hear any commotion at gunplay. But it looks like there's already been some action in here. Or, there will be. You can never take tents for granted with these goons. Thirteen out of a thousand clocks destroyed, apparently. Looks like Club's Deuce is getting back to you. He says he's got those tied up for interrogation. You ask him what else is new. Capturing that guy is like shooting a paralyzed monkey in the face. You are now Club's Deuce. Club's Deuce, rough him up. You remains tight-lipped, so you deal him a senseless shin-drubbing with your crook of felony. All the humanity! You can barely watch! He's probably still using a special ability to slow down time for himself. He can't feel a damn thing, and certainly isn't saying anything, apart from a very low noise which could just be him saying, Ow! very, very slowly. Clubs Deuce! Punch clocks and faces to establish chronology! Why would you do that? All these clocks are lovely! You say no reason to harm them. 987 out of 1,000 clocks unharmed! Clubs Deuce! Swap hats with those! You begin your feeble campaign of psychological warfare. Perhaps compromising his fashion motif is the way to get to him. Nope! Looks like he's still in his weird state of status and doesn't really care. Either that or it's driving him nuts. Just very, very slowly. Dump the contents of your war chest over him. War chest? What are you talking about? All you've got is this simple, unassuming deck of cards. Clubs Deuce, play some solitaire. Don't be stupid. To play solitaire, you need a deck of cards. I don't see a deck of cards, do you? All I see is your battle drove. Clubs Deuce, throw down the hat and stomp on it mercilessly. Oh no, it's itchy! And it looks like he's all wound up. He unties those and quickly swaps everyone's hats around. Those proceeds to make a fleet-footed getaway. The chase is on! Fate slick. Stop being hot box cars. All right, you're the boss. Hot box cars, you ain't. Someone has replaced your plain and serviceable hat with a silly and undersized one. An outrage beyond compare. You sure you know who the culprit was? You can still smell his overly caffeinated blood. 986 out of a thousand clocks shown moisty. You lift your left leg and hold it a little ways in the air. Oops. <laughs> Four out of 15 green torsos, dead. It is suggested that you wear CD's hat on top of your current one. You already wearing Deuce's hat, you fool. The one on the floor is Droog's hat. This is exactly why you always keep a backup hat on hand. This son of a bitch on the floor here has played his last game of musical hats. Soon these lugs will learn to show you some respect. You made this town what it is, after all. One nothing but a bunch of dust and rocks before you got here. You deploy your chest and swap this dinky little hat for one more suited to your tastes. Wait a minute. Oh, thank God. Your precious Scotty dogs are still here. You don't know what you'd do without them. You don't even want to think about it. Dai makes his usual sort of entrance. The nonplussed, vaguely bewildered sort. You got it! Clubs Deuce it is! You've opened your battle drove in search of your backup head. You also need some more rope to retie Doze, who is currently tearing through the mansion as we speak. If you don't hurry, he may clear the chair within the hour! But it's a big mess. You mostly just see a bunch of bombs and kites. You're not sure what's what. You can never really remember which card to pick up. 
You can't believe how shitty a memory is. Clubs Deuce, grab the Deuce of Clubs. You pick up your two licorice gummy bears. These need to be stored for safekeeping as soon as possible. Finding your backup hat has never been more urgent. Clubs Deuce, pick up all of the cards and throw them at those. You pick up a bunch of cards and fling them those way. Didn't accomplish a whole lot other than putting some of your private reading material on embarrassing public display. Clubs Deuce, pick a card, any card. You're a busy guy, so you just pick any old thing that you put in your head. Since you're in a pretty big hurry, you'll assume that it's your backup hat. You stand nearby the two remaining cards on the floor, an off-suited King and Jack. Pick up card depicting stately blonde-haired fellows. You ain't gotta stand around Jack King all day long, so you pick up the Jack of Diamonds. Oh, here's your backup hat. Problem solved, yes? Clubs Deuce. Forget your Clubs Deuce. Believe you are hearts box guys. You suddenly remember you are Diamond Stroog. Whoever took your hat is about to discover he's the unluckiest man on earth. He'd better hope you find him dead. What you're gonna do to him will be much less painful that way. Diamond Stroog, wear backup hat. You don't have a backup hat. All you got is this deck of cards. Oh wait, yes you do. It's stashed away in your brausoleum. It is suggested that you retrieve your hat from the brausoleum. You are the only member of this band of thugs who is civilized enough to keep more than one backup hat, as well as an extensive array of finely tailored suits. The brausoleum seem like the best storage option for your exceptional wardrobe. If there's any better sort of compartment to keep your wardrobe in, you'd love to hear it. Also, there's a shitload of guns and cards in there, too. You put on a backup head. Withdraw licorice fish from backup head. Whew. Your Swedish fish are still there. This is why it's a good idea to always store your candy in your backup head rather than your usual one. Other members of your gang have learned this the hard way, and they're finally starting to catch on. Suddenly, you get cold cocked in the face from the future. You know the knuckles belong to that sucker punch anywhere. Trace always knows where you've been. The spineless rat likes to follow your past trail around and mess with you. Trouble is, whenever he does, he lets you know exactly where he's going to be in the future. This time, you'll be ready for him. You radio Deuce for backup. Give him a time and place and exactly what path through the mansion to take. Diamond Stroog. Resume pursuit of wounded felt member. You don't know if the wounded guy went up the stairs or came down. Or who wounded him and when. Might have even been you for all you know. It is suggested that you follow the trail of blood up the stairs. Can't overthink this time stuff. You go what you got and head upstairs. <laughs>